That God will grant me to be brave and strong and true, and to fill the world with love my whole life through, and to fill the world with love, and to fill the world with love and to fill the world with love my whole life through in the noon time of my life i shall look to the sunshine at a moment in my life when the sky is blue And the blessing I shall ask shall remain unchanging. To be brave and strong and true, and to fill the world with love my whole life through, and to fill the world with love. And to fill the world with love, and to fill the world with love, my whole life I shall look to the sunset at a moment in my life when the night is due, and the question I shall ask only I can answer: Was I brave and strong and true? Did I fill the world with love? Did I fill the world with love? Did I fill the world with love? My whole life through. Did I fill the world with love? Did I fill the world with love? Did I fill the world with love? Beautiful, the hands that turn. 
the heart that bled, that took all my sin and bore it instead. How beautiful the tender eyes that chose to forgive and never despise. Please join us in praying to St. Michael the Archangel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who roam through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good morning. We welcome you as we celebrate the Holy Eucharist today, Monday, the fifth week of Easter. And our Mass is offered for the intentions requested by our parishioners and the intentions posted on this live stream, and particularly seeking God's love, mercy, and praying that the Holy Spirit may grant us the grace to be open to his guidance in our everyday lives. And our mass presider today is Father Balthazar Obiko, OFM, and kindly join us in singing the entrance hymn. Brothers and sisters, let's start our celebration. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's humbly acknowledge our need for God's mercy and forgiveness. You sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual help, so that defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There was an attempt at Iconium by both the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding countryside, where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a crippled man, lame from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, Stand up, straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Lyconian, The gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas, Zeus, and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, for he, together with the people, intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are of the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you good news that you should turn from these idols to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways. Yet in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witnesses. For he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with his words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response is, not to us, O Lord, but your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, but your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. Because of your mercy, because of your truth, why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but your name give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Heaven is the heaven of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but your name 
give the glory. Hallelujah, ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Hallelujah, ah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas discouraged, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal to us and not to the whole world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. We will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. The Gospel of the Lord. We started the live streaming on March 15, almost two months or four days short of two months. Using these two months of deprived, being deprived of sacramental communion to the Eucharistic species, most of us positively must have grown in faith and have appreciated another mode of Jesus' presence among us, that of spiritual communion. Spiritual because of the absence of any mediation, like a bread consecrated by the church through its ministry of the priesthood. Today's gospel reading is still part of the Last Supper discourse of Jesus. He was preparing his disciples of the new mode of presence in the sense of his, his being physically absent to them, that he will send them the Spirit to teach them everything. Judah's expression or Jude's expresses his dismay that the glorious manifestation of Christ will not be beneficial to the whole world when he says, Master, then what happened that you will only reveal yourself to us, to a limited few, and not to the whole world? The Jesus said, and Jesus rather said, there will be nothing of that sort. Judas had himself been thinking of a cosmic and spectacular manifestations of divinity, whether it's in the form of dancing sun or in loss in the interruption of nature where the power of God will be manifested in the whole world. There will be nothing of this nature once he is gone. God will come to manifest himself. God will come to dwell himself in those who keep his word. Keeping his word is a refrain that will be heard throughout the entire Last Supper discourse. This is the new mode of God's presence. 
We must remember that the Old Testament, the temple of stone, had been taught off as the place where God is present. In fact, Solomon built the temple so grandeur and made the temple as the basis of thanksgiving. But towards the wisdom literature, they speak more of a spiritual doctrine about divine habitation, about divine dwelling. God dwelling now in the hearts of the just. This is explicit in the book or wisdom literature. And Jesus today alludes to a new mode of presence, that of the Spirit, more interior, more dynamic. So my dear brothers and sisters, throughout these two months, in this pandemic crisis, which is solely not economic or health issues, but these are also opportunities for spiritual growth and transformation. We begin to appreciate God's presence unmediated by bread, unmediated by the church through its priest, by keeping His Word. If we keep His Word, which is loving God in others, Believe God dwells in us. With confidence, let's now raise our hearts to God the Father who guides us through his word. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may live the spirit of the gospel and seek God's will in her ministry of service. Let us pray to the Lord that we may all work for justice and human dignity, especially for the weak and the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as a community, we may support and uplift one another with the love and gentleness which the Lord has shown us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who are sick in mind, body, and spirit may find complete healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the COVID-19 epidemic come to a swift resolution with the recovery of the sick, the protection of those who have been exposed, for experts to find a cure, for government and health agencies to take the appropriate steps to hold its spread and that we, the faithful, act responsibly for the good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may enter the place Christ has prepared for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us also offer our own personal prayers and intentions before the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. Almighty Father, hear our prayers and open our hearts to welcome and love our needy brothers and sisters. We ask you this, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this bread we offer. 
Pray, my dear friends, that is our offerings be made acceptable to God, the loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. By commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, even the heavenly powers with angelic cause, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you indeed call your Lord, the founder of all holiness. May call you therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, it will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died, 
Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have given us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Broderick, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the clergy and religious. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, with Saints Francis and Claire of Assisi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, dear Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let's greet one another now, the sign of peace. Peace be to you. Lamb, of, Lamb God. of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, behold him the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are we who are invited to partake of this banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
intercessory prayer to saint francis will follow after the mass let us pray almighty and ever living god who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of christ increase in us we pray the fruits of this paschal sacrament pour into our hearts the strength of his saving food through christ the lord Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Her Majesty, let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join us in praying the intercessory prayer to Saint Francis in time of necessity. Saint Francis. through your intercession we seek to dwell in ourselves the faith hope and love that moved you to joyfully and radically follow our lord jesus christ so that we can see the meaning and the invitations of this suffering that befell the world today the continuous spread of the pandemic coronavirus that makes us worried and anxious what will happen to us especially that the poor would suffer gravely help us to put our trust fully into the loving hands of god may we receive the inner strength to overcome our most pressing concerns today in this present calamity may we open more generously our heart to share to the poor as our offering to god hoping that this be the start of our personal conversion and transformation of the church saint francis help us to continue praying for the grace of protection from this virus and for our deeper faith in the love and mercy of god May the blessings that we will receive through your intercession deepen our faith 
and inspire us to store up treasures in heaven where we hope to spend eternity with our loving father may we learn to pray as you've prayed and pray with faith sincerity and conviction where there is charity and wisdom there is neither fear nor ignorance where there is patience and humility there is neither anger nor disturbance where there is joy in acceptance there is a desire to be proactive and trustful where there is inner peace and meditation there is neither anxiousness nor dispersion where there is love of the lord there is no doubt and the enemy enemy could never enter our hearts where there is mercy and discernment there is neither excess nor hardness of heart pray for us in francis that we may obtain the graces and favors we ask for especially that we may obtain the grace of deeper faith in the triune god glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now, now and ever shall be, be world without, without end amen I can hear.